What's going on, guys? Oh, man, this is great. Oh, just beautiful. We got to get into a more serious manner. I'm never one to leave a guy behind, but I got a buddy two years ago. He trained in paramotor. He tried to get a paramotor and never got it. So two years down the road, here we are, and he's out $15,000. The thing is, is this same guy helped me. And I can't just be up here enjoying myself when he's not on the ground. I just don't feel right. I gotta help him. And I need your guys' help too. two guys sitting in a garage. I want you to tell your story to me, but we've got to make it concise. we got to make it digestible for people. Don't come across as a bitch, otherwise people won't believe you. Let's just do the facts. We don't need a name. All right, shut up and let me talk. You are kind of a bitch. <laughs> just get into like the timeline after training. How long before did you buy your gear? No, I didn't buy it before the class, it was after. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I was gonna be into it, you know, like I, I could stick with it, um, and I was. It was, I thought it was amazing. August 29th of 2019, I ordered the equipment. Typically, it said four to six weeks. About a month went by, they accidentally texted me, and I said, I'm not who you think I am, but where's my stuff? Is that coming along okay? Never responded, and that was my first no response. I didn't think too much of it, it was only like a month. Another month later, I'm like, okay, it should be there, because I had another buddy who was like, Hey, you know, let's let's go flying, you know, and I'm like, I still don't have my stuff. He said, how do you still not have your stuff? I said, I'll check with him again. And I just started calling, leaving messages, no response, emailing. This just went on probably at least between calls and emails about a dozen or so. Over what kind of time, Sam? Two weeks. So almost daily. Now, luckily I knew, so I was able to text her and she would get him usually to respond fairly quickly, but she couldn't really do anything to get me my stuff. He would respond, you know, not acknowledge anything I had sent to him or said to him or any of the calls and the questions. Just a quick email saying, um, oh, well, it'll be in next week. It's in customs, it's stuck. A month would go by, nothing. So I would start texting and calling again. No response for another couple of weeks. This isn't making sense. So I started doing more, what I should have done in the first place and started doing my research and started to actually see the complaints. But a lot of times what really got me was when I would see the complaints on like Facebook and they would describe what was happening to them. And it was just like the exact same thing. It was just ghosting. It would not respond to anything. They would wait maybe six months before they'd finally give up and just say, hey, I had to pay the $1,500 because I didn't want to pay the 2000 or whatever for the lawyer. And I said, well, you know, I'm the kind of person that would. Like the 1500 for like the restock? fee or whatever he was asking uh, for. For me, he called it sales commission for reselling it for me. It wasn't until somewhere in December that he claimed to have it for the first time. So when I called it and I talked to them and they said, yes, we're aware of some of the complaints. He's his own thing. So they didn't want to do anything to help. I found that kind of shocking. If you choose someone to be your middle guy, your representative for another country, essentially, they should be good at what they do. And they should be honest and reliable and they should, you know, we need to give them that money. It should go to the thing that you bought. So you gave them honest. about 12 weeks then. Yeah, about 12 weeks. And it was seeing the other guys talk about how they waited six months. So I wasn't willing to wait six months because I wanted to get up in the air, you know. The further you get from training, obviously the more difficult it's going to be to get in the air. Yeah. Potentially more dangerous. It's just been an absolute. Big. You know, bully him first. That's usually what he does. I know with my lawyer, try to tell them. And I told a lot of people that I'm just some bipolar nut job. But then would not show up to court. It would go out of the way to contact and try to get them to not take my case, uh, not listen to me, my own, you know, my own lawyer. When court comes around, never shows. He has a hard time keeping track of his lies. There's a lot of confusion. I'm being, you know, conflated with a lot of people. There was a fellow student of mine. He did the same thing. He would like, he would say, your frame's here, but I'm waiting on your motor. Yes. And then a week later, he told them, Everything. Uh, your motor's here, but your the frame is stuck in like customs. That's what happened to me. You can't even keep track of your lies. I've talked to other customers, some that have waited over a year. Over a year? Absurd. Yeah. 
That'd be really funny if like bitch was telling all his friends like, no, that Trevor guy, I had the trike for him and all that and still not even remember the true story for your case. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. <laughs> That's what like people reached out to me like Trevor, they're all like, you know, Trevor's crazy. He, this trike was there for him and there's like yeah. something offered and I'm That'd like. That'd be great if I ordered a trike. I was like, but he doesn't fly a trike. He's a foot launcher. Yeah. And they just, they wouldn't listen. It's well, like, no, you're talking about the wrong person. Mm -hmm. Please explain to me his case. What is the excuse for this individual's case? Right. I got a lot of people, not a lot of people, but some that contacted me and told me, you know, to just shut up and quit lying and all this stuff. I called every name in the book. And oh yeah, I got called some interesting names. It's kind of painful, but I mean, it wasn't, it's because I'm not in that community or have not been and no one knows who I am. So what's the timeline of like the legal stuff? Filed the lawsuit. We did try to go down there and pick up the stuff. We gave him one final chance. He disappeared at the last minute. He, he gotten notice, certified letter and all that a week and a half before. I think it was a week and a half to two weeks. And so that very morning he just uh, up and disappeared he, or he called and said he wasn't going to be there. And um, only I could pick up my stuff. I mean, we had the police there. I had a, a lawyer rep, um, and his representative. After that, that's when we went you know, full board the legal um, side of it. Do you want a sweatshirt or something? No, I'm good. Yeah, the legal stuff, uh, that's, that's so... Don't f judge me. It's like nine in the morning. <laughs> it would have been probably April. He got his notices to show to court. He didn't show. You know, he didn't show up for the two times he was summoned a month apart to appear for the third one because, yeah. Yeah, I can need a lot more to get through this story. It's all about that. <laughs> when did you win your court case? Oh, I have to look for sure. It was probably, a, hey, hey, stay away. It's been, it's been over two years, about two, two and a half years since I gave him the money. Now what happened was when COVID came along, the state of <laughs> overreacted. The criminal justice system just ground to a halt in <laughs> for about a year and a half. They were supposed to do a discovery of assets to see if they could get you know my money back through there. But what's happened now is he had a year and a half to do whatever he wanted. He changed the business over to his wife, took out the LLC. What was the date that you won your the judgment? 2020, did that? Did you win it? June, I believe. June? Okay. Yeah. Has your lawyer fees been pretty much just 2200 bucks, or is it, has yeah, it it's grown been, since then? So yeah, we're talking like all up between Paramotor, the lawyer fees, probably about 15000 It's all there in the behavior, the patterns, the complaints, if you can find the complaints, if he doesn't get them deleted. He's had a lot of stuff that I put up, taken down on Facebook. Uh, Luckily, some of the stuff stayed up. This is important for me to put in because you're not somebody that talked me out of my situation, like going back or whatever. I found out stuff on my own from a bunch of different sources and I'm like, I'm not comfortable coming back. And then I told him, hey, I don't wanna come back. I'll just take my motor or a refund. And it wasn't until after that, I scrolled through Facebook again and then found yours, your postings. Yeah, down, yeah. And then I was like, holy bitch, I need to jump on this right now. And luckily, you talked to me for like three hours, like a day later. And then four days later, I'm heading out on a training week to, and actually successfully got my money back. Mm -hmm. But if I wouldn't have found your post, I would have been big hose. I wouldn't be flying today. Have you had updates like in the last six months, like from your lawyer or uh, well, actually, new strategies? Yeah, at some point he gave me, sent me a proof of life photo of his paramotor. Now I've heard about showing that he had it supposedly in his shop. Now it was the most common one. And I've heard stories about him sending photos one that was kind well, of famous one of my students he got like that proof of life photo and it was like a stock image yep and i know yep. of another one uh or maybe you told me it was like at a factory it was yes, like clearly that, that, at the yeah. factory it it's wasn't like, even that's not his hangar it wasn't even the u.s it wasn't even in yeah. the united states it was in a showroom do you think it's no. so pretty hopeless that you won't ever see your money that they won't be able to collect or garnish he'll just go bankrupt or do you think there will be a possibility that's that's the most likely yeah i, I probably lost it this drives me big. crazy that like even throughout all this, him being backlogged, he gave away a motor this year. Yeah, and there's know, a lot of hearts and minds going on in the raffle. He gave away a motor when other people are owed them. Yeah, and they could, um, yeah, yeah, paying customers could not he, get their stuff. He sponsors stuff in the community like all the time and gets his name out there and you know, it, Charity, and then yeah. even when I was like waiting and struggling on my end, you've got like this famous YouTuber, famous in the paramotoring community, who oh gets a gets a new unit gets a factory R. I watch this stuff. How is that going to make me feel? The only satisfaction I get with some of that stuff is like the YouTuber. He comes across like he doesn't even want to fly it. Cause like, even when he's like, Hey, I just got this new engine. Then he's like up in there. He's like, Oh, now I feel like I got to make videos. 
and I was gonna actually go get a Mac fly. You know, uh, uh, another guy, he ordered his stuff. I ordered mine in February. I got my money back in July. Another guy ordered it in January and going into even like late July, I'm not sure when he got it, if it was actually August, but oh, motor sear, but not the frame. And then it turned into frame sear, but not the motor. Yeah. So and, that was and then that going. turned into, he had bought the top of the line model, Beep. sent him a picture of the bottom of the line, like the Oh, yeah, okay. yeah can't and it straight. was a stock photo. I was like, "Why is your motor sitting out in the grass?" Yeah, he keeps them in the hangar. Like that isn't yeah. your motor. <laughs> and so then it was the wrong frame, and he got run around, run around. I mean, he was after him. Like, I want to call a lawyer. I'm done. I'm done. I'm yeah. done. It, it's so stupid when you know they'll blame COVID delays or whatever, which it do exist. I have a friend who his Maverick was stuck in customs for no freaking reason for three weeks. Mm -hmm. It was just it was stuck in customs, and Parajet gives you a tracking number for whoever orders it. Yeah, that's what the big thing that people need. And. Yeah, that stuff happens, but not six months. Yeah. If you have those kind of delays, a seller needs to come up and say, I'm going to list this as out of stock and I can't get it for you. Mm -hmm. So don't give me your money yeah. until I know I can get it. But I always tell people now, you got to pay with a credit card so you get the charge back mm -hmm. security. Right. So that way, if he told you four weeks and it's turning into two months and you're approaching that cutoff limit, mm -hmm. you, you can, can say, I'm going to do a charge back mm -hmm. unless... You know, right off the bat, he was honest and saying, this is going to take me four months to get to you. Are you okay with that? Yeah, and what I got from Bill was that he said, she goes, oh, well, he's more of a, I'll, let, I'll call you when it comes in kind of guy. What kind of excuse is that? Like, he's not responding to any calls or emails because he's not that kind of a guy. It's like, I gave him how many thousands? He's going to become that guy. Which is stupid because, one, apparently his wife handles the office. Okay, well, if you don't want to talk to or email people, mm -hmm. that's fine. Certain people don't like doing that. Yeah. Certain people just want to run a business, but they don't want to do like front end customer support. Okay, that's fine. You got your whole family working for you. Your wife runs the office. How come she doesn't call people? That's where the community really needs to stop and do a, a little bit of soul searching because the most important thing about the community that we rely on each other to learn about safety and be consumer advocates. The thing about when you're talking about like the trust, I mean, like you have a small community. Small communities don't work with, if there's no trust, if there's bad characters in there, there's other people in there that aren't going to say anything. They just turn a blind eye. That community, like it's, it's done. But that sense of community is dead. Yeah, what really hurts about this is like I've gleaned so much information from so many people mm -hmm. and I've got screenshotted text messages and all sorts of stuff that's been forwarded to me. Yeah. But I don't want to share those because if I go and I share it, it's going to go and harass the shit out of this person. And, oh yeah, he's and that's, he bullies. He bullies and, hard. And I don't want I don't want to cause that person more damage. But um, at the same time I want to protect other people. Yeah. All right, yeah. I think that wraps it up for now. Let's pack up go. To Sounds good. So yeah, this is what I do. <laughs> I stick my phone up there. I yeah. usually try to think of a funny way to say hello to people, so it'll be like, what the f do you want? And then I gotta put a beer belch over f The first few times I heard it, I thought it was like, you were really belching, and I was just like, what the f and and then I realized it was a sensor thing. And then it's just pretty much babbling, but because I'm by myself in my truck, I can you know, it's do whatever I want. And then I naturally just like pick my nose and... yeah. Like that, so I'll do a super cut of that. Yeah, it's just not stop. I'm a disgusting person. Rap. Rap. Oh man, no wind takeoff. Woo. I didn't think I was gonna get up. I got Trevor watching me. It's been about two years since he's been around this. Bitch.
Now here's the deal guys, I need your help. I can't just ignore him and say not my problem because he helped me big time when I was having problems. And I'm not flush with cash, so this is a big deal. I'm starting a fundraiser and I'm gonna put down a billion dollars. That's nothing to laugh at for me. And I just want to get this guy gear. Now, if you guys want to donate and ask something to me, feel free. If you're a manufacturer, and I'm a nobody. Ah, uh, subs, views, but you want me to try out something of yours and make a donation or something, you know, whatever it'll take. I'm willing to work. But I'm going to kickstart this fundraiser for a dollars. Let's get him a motor and a wing. I'll take care of making sure he goes to a professional trainer. He's about a three, four hour drive for me, but he deserves to be up in the air. He trained, he paid money, he didn't get his stuff. I just want to turn this into a positive thing. If you guys can help me out, that'd mean the world to me. You guys have been really special to me, and this is absolutely really important. And you know what? Let's just say by some chance he gets his money back. I'll just make a promise that the donation goes to Resurgence PBG. That's really important. But it's highly unlikely he's going to see his money. I am tired. <laughs> I was up till five in the morning last night playing a gig. But yeah, I'm gonna do whatever I can for this guy. If it wasn't for him, I might not be up right now. I really owe it to him. So whatever you guys can help me out with, I'll pay it forward. If you wanna troll me and call me naive or, this has gotta stop. This isn't just some random guy training and people not doing their research. He's endorsed by the USPPA. If you pay money for something, you have to receive those goods. He needs to be up here with me. Yeah! This is the business. Well, you do this and another pass and come in for a landing. I dig it out! Yeah! Man, what a nice night. I wish I got up earlier. Now I'll come in for a landing. Let's see what she's got. No. Yeah! Woo! Foot track that. Yeah. Right, old lady. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Hey guys, I just want to go over a couple things. So the school that we went to, we received decent training and the people who taught there were pretty good and I liked them a lot. This isn't to bash the people who teach there or this man's family at all. My only problem is with one person because when we trained there, he didn't do most of the training. He handled towing and talking you up on flights. But the biggest problem was is he pushed to kite in dangerous wind conditions. I got dragged into active railroad tracks. I had guys twice my size tumble over me. My brother got lifted and sprained his elbow. He actually didn't want to fly after that. He had a couple flights and he said, I just want to call it good because it's been a good trip. And I just want to end on a good note. But I did talk him up to have one more final flight. And this wasn't any fault of the people who taught there because I will quote one of them, there was one evening we were all afraid to pull up our wings because we knew it would be a bad time. We were told, quote, if he shows up and sees us not kiting, he's going to be mad. And another instructor came out and essentially sat on our wings. He didn't say anything. He just came out and was like, no, we're not doing this. And that's the thing. They, he'll schedule weak blocks and try to get five and six students in there and just tries to rush it regardless of weather. And that's not okay. You can never jeopardize the safety of students. If the weather's bad, students just need to come back and not force it at the risk of someone getting injured. That's just absolutely unacceptable. But for the people that taught there, they were good people and they taught well. And I think it would actually be a fantastic school if they were the ones running it. It's just one person who is creating those conditions and not only that, but not following up with students afterwards and doing something with their money. This person is a USPPA instructor administrator. That's what makes this so unacceptable. Those people should have the highest integrity, follow training procedures to the letter, and when given deposit money for equipment, that money is used to order the gear immediately. I've had some folks ask me why I haven't named this person. I did not want to use this platform to create that kind of drama or bash somebody. I have gone to the proper authorities. I have talked to the USPPA training committee, 
and I might actually reach out to the state that this person's based in. I'll let the professionals handle it on that side. But this is not a case of someone not doing their research and going to a backyard trainer. This is supposed to be one of the best of the best that you can trust. And we have a serious issue and the USPPA has an issue that they need to handle. As for Trevor, there is a high chance he won't see his money, even though he has won a legal battle. If you guys would like to help me, I'll leave in the comments how you can donate. I just want to see this guy flying and right or wrong and turn this into a positive story. He's gone two years with that kind of stress and frustration and self-doubt, and that's not right, what this poor man's been through. I went through it myself for a much shorter time. There were a couple times it brought me to tears, thinking that my dreams of doing this were coming to an end because someone took advantage of me. And I just want to get him flying. If you guys can help me get his gear, I'll help him go to a professional trainer. But he helped me, and if I didn't find him when I did, I might not be flying today. And if he happens to win down the road and he does recover, I'll ask him to donate that money to Resurgence PPG. And I, I trust that he would follow that. But I think we just need to right this wrong. If you'd like to donate as an individual, if you're a dealer or an importer watching this and you'd like to sponsor this gentleman or even send me a unit, you know, I, I'd be more than happy to put in the work or pay it forward or do what anybody might ask of me just to help Trevor. If you'd like me to make a review video or whatnot as a beginner myself and and pass that along to Trevor or if I really like it I'll give him my Parajet you know but I just want to do the right thing he deserves to be with us he helped me accomplish my dreams and I want to help him accomplish his uh oh get thirsty time for a Nirvana energy drink ooh that tastes like cat pit one of the things that hurts most about this is a little brother trained with me, and he was twice the student I was. He kicked all our butts, but because of the drama of all this, he lost all interest in flying. He actually wanted to go back and work on his PPG too, but after he saw what I had to deal with, he I can't even talk him into it. He's just done. He doesn't want anything to do with it. I'll never get to share the skies with him. Shout out to Parajet. Parajet. You get what you paid for. No, literally. You give them money, they give you a paramotor. Toodles, guys. <laughs>